There's always a play that no one really knows about or no one really focuses on about and then they get to a tournament and then just light up the stage. And there we go everyone, we are back again for another fantastic conversation on Friday Night Counter Attack. This week we are looking at the top 5 young players from Africa's teams at the World Cup. I didn't really know how to word it properly, but you know what we're going to be talking about. Five young, talented African players that you're going to be seeing at the World Cup. Number one, as you all kind of know, probably all should know by now, Ashraf Hakimi. You're looking at the Moroccan international fullback who's probably going to be playing as a left back in this tournament to accommodate for uh, Bayern Munich's Mazouari, who will also be playing as a fullback for Morocco. Ashraf Hakimi, as you all know, is a strong, athletic, got 53 caps for his country, eight goals and seven assists. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Ashraf Hakimi can deal with the likes of Canada, Belgium and Croatia, all in the same group. Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard, Leandro Trossard. Yes, Leandro Trossard, you heard me right. What a season he is having. I've said it for ages and I'll say it again. Leandro Trossard will be signed by a top club in the next two seasons. What a fantastic player he is. And then you're looking at Croatia, you're looking at Orsic, you're looking at Perisic, you're looking at Anton Rebic as well. Fantastic wingers, people that can play on both wings and off both feet, which is fantastic to see. And really got to see how Akimi kind of deals with this. Alfonso Davies normally plays as a left winger, sometimes as a right winger as well. So there's lots to talk about with um, how Ashraf Hakimi can deal with this pressure that's going to be dealing with at the World Cup, being one of the main players for Morocco as well. Can he deal with it? We're going to have to wait and see. Number two on my list, we're going all the way to Birmingham to talk about a Tunisian international who plays for Manchester United but is on loan obviously at Birmingham. Hannibal Medjbri, centre midfielder, 19 years old, aggressive, witty, looks to beat the press quite easy. At 18 caps for his country, one assist already. Tunisia, you already know, they're going to play in Denmark, they're going to play in Australia and they've got the world champions France in their group as well. I mean look at the midfielders that they're going to be facing in uh, Tunisia respectively, they're going to be facing Kamavinga, too many, Aaron Moy obviously for Australia, Christian Eriksen for Denmark as well. How will Hannibal Medri do? I think Hannibal Medri will be a key component for this Tindies inside, even having a chance of finishing in the second place as well. Because you all know with France, sometimes they're going to be the best team in the tournament or they'll just fold and capitulate uh, going forward. But Tunisia, I like to see how they're going to do with this team. They are a tough opposition. They've had some good results recently as well. But obviously Hannibal Medri is the one I'm going to be looking out for um, in the Tunisian side this time around. Number three on my list is probably the favourite one that I've got on the list so far as well. Someone who I've enjoyed watching over the last two seasons now. Uh, he's one of the young bright sparks in Ericsson Hogg's Ajax Champions League side last season because this season they're out of the Champions League because they don't have Eric Ten Hag, my boy. But yeah, no, the guy I'm talking about is Mohamed Kudus. What a guy. Is it Mohamed or Mohamed? I don't know which one it is. Uh, but Mohamed Kudus is, is the guy I'm talking about. 22 years old, Ghanaian international, attacking midfielder who can also play as a striker as well. Ghanaian sides tend to do not great in the World Cup. They obviously did very well in the 2010 World Cup, getting to the quarterfinals, if I remember correctly, or the round of 16 against Uruguay. That would have been unbelievable if they can replicate that again in 2022. But again, some of um, Mohamed Kudus's main opponents, when you're looking at Uruguay, you're looking at Bentancur, you're looking at Vecino, you're looking at Lucas Torreira. If you're going to look at South Korea, you're going to be looking at Jong Woo Young. Obviously, from my Freiburg days of playing football manager, I know who he is and I've seen him properly, so it's good to see. And then obviously Portugal, Ruben Neves, João Tinho, William Carvalho, Danilo, Bruno Fernandes, if he plays deeper in this role as well. This is the kind of quality we're going to be seeing in this World Cup group as well. So I'm looking forward to really understanding how Ghana play. I'm really going to be understanding how take revenge and retribution against this Uruguay side. Hopefully Mohamed Kudus is the guy to get revenge and he avenges Azamo Jean. Awful thing that happened back in 2010. Blue Suarez handballed in it and Jean just missing a penalty. I mean, Jean, you should never have missed that penalty in the first place. Why the hell did you blast it so high? Awful choice by Azamo Jean. But yeah, my Ghanaian choice in this African five um, to look forward to is obviously going to be Mohamed Kudus. Number four on my list is Brian Mbemo. I thought he was French personally, but clearly he's moved to uh, Cameroon, he's changed his allegiance to Cameroon International, uh, probably just so he gets a chance of being at the World Cup. Brian Mbwemu, you're officially a Cameroon International, so we've got to treat you like a Cameroon International. 23 years old, right winger, and 
unfortunately he scored a very good goal against Manchester United back in August so it's not left my mind straight away but yeah he's a very good winger to kind of look at as well Brazil in their group you've got Serbia in their group and you've got Switzerland in their group as well so Switzerland uh, Ricardo Rodriguez a veteran fullback is going to be a good test of his um, literally just his movement as well going to see how he does on and off the ball against Ricardo Rodriguez Alex Tellers if he gets into the squad so we're going to see how Brian and Bueno does does he have the capabilities to go over to the other wing and test the other fullback out that's something I would like to see and I'd like to see how he does in this Cameroon side who aren't in the best of form so far as well and obviously with Serbia they're going to be a tough test uh, to break down as well so we're really going to have to wait and see how Brian and Bwemu does but I would really like to see if he can bring his Premier League form into his international form hopefully bringing a bit of flair a bit of creativity and just a bit of energy into this Cameroon side which we would love to see but yeah number four Brian and Bwemu. finally for number five we're going to Senegal so I'm going for Bamba Dieng the Marseille striker 22 years old got four appearances for Marseille this season he can play across the front three as well he's got 13 caps for Senegal and got one goal against Cape Verde in the African Cup of Nations so I thought when I was watching him last time I thought you know what it'd be pretty good to see how it goes and how it does but yeah they've got a pretty good attack Senegal as you know Senegal's attack is pretty good as you already know you already know about Sadio Mane you already know about Ismaili Sarr so hopefully Bamba Dien can create something different as well and obviously Senegal, if they finish second or first in their group and they qualify, they have a chance of facing England. So this is someone I've been watching out for. So I thought, you know what, you've got to watch out for these Senegalese guys. I think they're going to finish second and some, maybe even first. The African champions, man. Got to show them some respect in this tournament as well. They've got Netherlands in their group. They've got Ecuador in their group. And I'm pretty sure they've got Qatar in their group as well. Bamba Dieng is going to be going to have a look at Virgil van Dijk, he's going to be looking at Matthias Dillet, he's going to be looking at Bayern Leverkusen, Piero Himpachi as well, someone who I've seen personally uh, first hand at before Bayern Leverkusen as well, Qatar, I'm not going to pretend like I know. I believe Bamba Dieng can make a name for himself at this tournament, there's always a play that no one really knows about or no one really focuses on about and then they get to a tournament and then just light up the stage. Bamba Dieng could be the guy, he could be the African guy to actually light up the whole tournament from all the African nations. I would love to see it personally. Um, we always need a new hero every now and then to support. Why can't it be Bamba Dieng? Shout out my boy Bamba Dieng. I don't know why I did that, but shout out Bamba Dieng. Do you guys agree or do you guys disagree? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.